Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we are once again talking about Trappist-1 system and a new discovery or a new analysis that might give it some hope after all. Welcome to What The Math, let's discover what this is all about. So by now we know that TRAPPIST-1 is a very interesting system. It's uh, not too far away from us. Uh, it's got this very unusual red dwarf in the middle that's very ancient, uh, older than our own sun. And it has seven uh, Earth mass or very similar to Earth mass planet, planets orbiting around it. But the problem is that they are too close. Most of them are probably bombarded by a tremendous amount of radiation from all of these flares that you see. And the other problem is that they're probably also uh, very likely tidally locked to the star, meaning that the same face always points at the star and the other face is always away from the star. And in previous videos, um, I talked about how it's very likely that due to this tremendously powerful uh, red dwarf, it's very, very possible that there is no atmosphere and possibly even no water left on these planets. But there is a new analysis coming out uh, of the interwebs and basically this new study shows that, well, it's still possible that most of these planets may have actually had a lot of water on them to begin with. So even after billions of years of being bombar bombarded by this unusual star, some of them may have actually maintained some water. So let me just go back a little bit and try to talk about this in a little bit more detail. So let's start from scratch. First of all, there's uh, two types of energy that might be bombarding this planet that is important for us. So for example, TRAPPIST-1E here is probably receiving a low energy UV light and high energy UV light coming out of TRAPPIST-1, uh, just like Earth does basically. So these two types of energies uh, do two different things on the surface of this planet. The, uh, the so-called low energy UV light bombards the planet, and we can kind of simulate this by literally bombarding the planet with these pulses that are going to be coming out of the star. So here's that low uh, level UV light that's going to be coming here. And when it arrives to the planet, what it's going to do is it's going to take water molecules and here it might be ice or it might be liquid water, and then separate it into hydrogen and oxygen. And it's going to do this for billions of years. So what happens when you separate water? It creates oxygen and of course hydrogen, but oxygen is kind of important. So this already by itself creates a possibility for some of these planets to have oxygen on them, which is very, very interesting. On the other hand, there's also the high level UV light. So let's, let's do this again. This time it's going to be the high level UV light and this light takes those molecules, uh, oxygen and hydrogen, and uh, energizes them to the point where they start leaving TRAPPIST-1. So basically what, what happens is the atmosphere that might have been created from the low level UV light is now actually going to be turning that UV light into essentially escaping molecules. So, okay, that was too fast. Let's do it a little bit slower. So these molecules might now be actually escaping uh, from, from this uh, planet and they're escaping because the UV light energized them to the point of their escape velocity and they're basically going into the rest of the solar system. Now this, this is oxygen and hydrogen, again, more hydrogen than oxygen because hydrogen is much lighter. Uh, but this doesn't change the fact that if there was a lot of water to begin with, this process might still be ongoing, but it also might mean that there's still water on the surface and there is still uh, possibly even some oxygen circulating in the atmosphere. And the scientists uh, studying uh, these planets discovered that, um, well, it's very possible that in that period of time since, since the creation of the system, since the planet's existence, uh, the uh, six innermost planets, so the uh, planets that are inside the solar system here, may have lost up to about uh, 20 Earth oceans worth of water. In other words, if you look at Earth, if I, if I add Earth here, 
in a binary orbit with this planet. So we know that Earth has uh, this much water on it. And TRAPPIST-1e would have lost about 20 times the amount of that. But that still doesn't change the fact that there could have been more water to begin with. And so according to this paper, it's possible that the outermost four planets, specifically E, F, G, and H, so this is one of them, um, may have lost anywhere from 20 to even maybe only three masses of uh, Earth amount of water. So this times three to this times 20. Now, if there was not much water to begin with, then that still leaves us in the same situation as in previous videos, where we have no water, no atmosphere, nothing left because of the tremendous, tremendous, tremendous amount of radiation coming out of TRAPPIST-1 star, because it's a relatively active red dwarf. But if there was a lot of water to begin with, as a matter of fact, if it was uh, mostly water, or if there was a very large chunk of water on the inside from from the start if it was a water planet to begin with then these planets haven't actually dried up yet they are drying up but uh, and that's of course even if they have magnetosphere they're still drying up because the radiation is just way too powerful it's like thousands times more powerful than it is on earth um, but even it, even after billions of years, this water is still probably there if there was a lot of it present. And uh, it's actively being deconstructed into oxygen and hydrogen. It's actively uh, being released into the outer space. And so this solar system might be very, very unusual. It has a lot of oxygen, a lot of uh, hydrogen in the interplanetary space. This might even be creating these unusual objects on the outskirts, like comets and, and asteroids that we haven't detected yet. But most importantly, on the planet here, uh, this side of the planet might be creating a lot of oxygen that then sort of circulates around and might be surviving on the dark side of the planet. And uh, so this might be a world that we can't even Im imagine. It might be actually a world full of oxygen. It might, it might be a world full of uh, water, liquid water. And if all of these planets were environmentally rich in water ice from start, Basically, if they were very, very rich in water ice when the system was created, uh, in that case, then maybe all seven of these planets have these unusual water uh, environments with the closest planet being uh, basically full of boiling water, super, super hot water that we can try to generate here. Uh, so water that's ridiculously hot and is just creating these unusual clouds everywhere, which is actually how we could potentially detect if there's water here, if we detect a lot of clouds in the atmosphere. And the clouds, of course, have high albedo, so that's how we could measure it. If this planet has a lot of albedo, if albedo here is very, very high, we know this, this is a water world with potentially a lot of clouds. And with the outer planets being super rich in water ice and basically being covered entirely in it, and this water ice might still actually be creating oxygen in the atmosphere, thus giving these planets uh, atmospheric pressure, obviously cold temperature, but also atmospheric pressure that would be enough for us to actually uh, walk on. So all of these are speculations, but these are positive speculations, and time will tell if this is true. Uh, now, we know that when Earth was created, it was relatively water poor. So a slightly different mechanism would have to create these planets. Uh, most of the water on Earth came from collisions from other objects, like uh, mostly comets and asteroids. And we still are not actually sure exactly where it came from because um, some of the comets we've studied have different type of water on them. So we don't know if it was comets or asteroids. Uh, but for water to be on these planets, they would have to actually be created on the outskirts of Trappist. So they have to be created somewhere maybe right here and then with time they would have to migrate closer and closer to trappist bringing that water with them so that's the only way that they could have so much water from the beginning otherwise we're still stuck with those relatively dry and relatively empty trappist planets all right so just to summarize the new study suggests that even with the amount of radiation coming out of TRAPPIST-1, it's possible that the uh, water here 
might not have all been destroyed. It might still be present on the surface and be actively uh, destroyed, but still have enough to go for billions and billions of years. It doesn't change the fact that these planets are very dangerous to live on because of the radiation, but it changes the fact that these might actually be uh, not dry worlds, but water worlds with atmosphere. But at the same time, this can only have happened if these planets were created on the outskirts of TRAPPIST-1 and then migrated toward TRAPPIST-1, uh, forming the position where they are right now. Now, we currently think that this is maybe what happened, but there might have been a completely different creation story here, and we might actually not be uh, certain how these planets were made. So within the next decade, we'll hopefully discover more about this, this star, and maybe even come up with technology to be able to visit it. Right now, it's just a speculation, and we'll have a telescope ready, named, known as James Webb Telescope, uh, in the next few years to try to observe this in more detail. Watch out for more videos on TRAPPIST-1 and subscribe to this channel if you still haven't. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and share this video with someone who enjoys learning through video games. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And this right here might give you an idea of how all of this outgassing is happening. This is actually a pretty good representation of a planet losing atmosphere. Although this planet in this case is ridiculously hot because of the supernova I, I just initiated. And now it's completely gone, ev evaporated into a tiny piece of matter.